This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Community Matters. Think Tech Hawaii has dedicated this time for us to interview, to meet candidates that are running for office from all over the state, from as far south as South Point on the Big Island, all the way up to Nihihau and everything in between, places that most of us, especially in urban Honolulu, didn't, don't know exist. And today, today is really very special because we are visiting with Representative D. Morikawa, who does represent Nihihau. Aloha, D. Thank you so much for coming. This is a real pleasure to meet you. Aloha, Marcia. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Tell us about D. You've been involved in state community, the state, the legislature, for how many years now? Well, fresh out of high school, I was hired with the County of Kauai. So I've been a government employee for 36 years, and then I ran for office for, and I've been in office for eight years now. Wow. So my whole adult <laughs> whole life is adult. public service. With Kauai? Yes. Now, you were originally from? I was born on, on the Big, Big Island, Island, and then I was raised here, uh, Waima Falls Park. And then I went to school here, fresh out of uh, high school. I moved back to Kauai to stay with my mother. Yeah. So tell us, as uh, most of us don't know about being Hawaiian, and that the culture of the Big Island, Hawaii, the Hawaii Island, and the culture of uh, Kauai are so different, especially Nihihau. Tell us about yes. the different cultures, the sure. different things. I come from the Waipio uh, Valley family, uh, which is traditionally Hawaiian, Chinese, long ago kind of met together, never really interacted with any other races. But fortunately, my dad was able to meet my Japanese mom in Honoka, and here I am today. But the dialect from the Hawaiians on the Big Island versus the Hawaiians on the Ihau or the west side of Kauai is really different. But you know, it, there's similarities culturally, we're the same, but just the dialect is a is little it? different. So t tell us about Nihihau. That is, I, I'm, I'm really excited, thrilled to talk about Nihihau. I think we have a, a sh picture of the Kauai, Kauai County and Nihihau. Right. Uh, Nihihau is actually a private island <clears throat> owned by the Robinsons. I have personally never been there. Um, I leave them alone until they need help, and then they know they, they're able to reach out to me if so needed. But they, they thrive on their own, um, and I, I respect them for that. And because of that, you know, they, they're a good neighbor. They're a good neighbor for all of our residents. Why, why is it called the Forbidden Island? Well, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> you can't really go there without any permission. Um, we have fishermen who have tried to get onto their beaches, and there's, there's been problems and confrontations, but I think we have to respect their privacy, and I believe that's why it's called that. The Forbidden Island. Yes. So now, and Prince Jonah Kuhio mm -hmm. Kalani Ane Ole was mm -hmm. born there. So yes. is that a part, of, were they part of the royal family? How does that work? No, I don't think so. Um, I think if I, I did some quick research, it goes back to Kamoli'i and mm -hmm. um, the, the family way back then were Christians and that's how they acquired the land and turned it over to the Robinsons eventually. But I don't see anything that links Prince Kuhio with them, but you know, I'm not a, student of the Hawaiian culture. <laughs> so, yes, so it just seemed interesting that this little, well, it's a pretty big island. Yes, yes. Yeah. And so the Robinson family 
bought that from? Did they buy it? Did, how did they acquire it? Yes, it was bought for maybe $10,000 many, many years ago. And I think it was the Sinclair family. And then through um, the generations, it ended up in the Robinsons' hands. So they were basically a plantation town, or no, sugar not, plant? Not really. They were, I think, um, sheep. And um, right today, they're more dependent on the uh, Navy to help them economically, because yep. their island is situated in a very critical oh. area for um, Navy operations. So that is included in your district? Yes, it is. Uh, we have also have to remember Lehua is also in, although not, no one lives on Lehua, it is a pristine area that we're trying to preserve, especially as a bird sanctuary. So where is that in relationship to? It's just off of Nihau, um, just a touch away. And of course, we're, I think, 17 miles away from Nihau. And, and so let's go back to you mm -hmm. now. Sure. <laughs> so. Your area of mm -hmm. Kauai is where? It starts from Koloa, Poipu Koloa, and mm -hmm. goes all the way through Kalaheo, down to Eleele, Hanapepe, Waimea, Kekaha, and then over to, um, of course, the Nepali, part of the Nepali area, and then Niihau and Lehua. So that's, that's huge. It's huge, yes. We have a state hospital, we have a major harbor, we have three recreational boat harbors, which is um, very useful for the west side because we have a lot of recreational boating that goes out from the west side. When, you know, with this storm earlier this year, was that affected in your area? No, it didn't. Maybe a small portion of Koloa town, uh, but it was mostly in Hanalei. So that's a different part of Yes, it's around the Nepali area. Oh, and. So tell me about, you now you have been in the legislature for how long? Eight years now. And so you're running for re-election? Yes, I am. Every other year, we're all up for election. It's like our job performance report time. <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> so are you running unopposed, or no, do you have somebody? No, I do have a primary opponent. Does that happen every year? Every year I do have an opponent, um, usually in the general, because it's a Republican opponent. This, this one is more stressful for me because my opponent and I share the same group of family and friends. Oh. So it's, it's a little tough. Oh my, yes, I would yeah. think so. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so you have friends, family, so they've got to choose, is that it? Yes. Yes, okay, so then, now before you, decided to run for office. Mm -hmm. What You said you were with the county for 35 yes, years. So. I worked actually under the leadership of our great mayor, Bernard Cavallo, for many years. Um, I was in Parks and Recreation, so a lot of my work dealt with the kupuna and with the children. So after 36 years, our district wasn't getting very much state representation. So it was at that point that I decided, I think I should run and, and I think I can do more at the state level. And sure enough, you can do more at the yeah. state level. You actually can bring funding home and you can provide for the organizations that need help to sustain their culture or infrastructure. And I think that's really where, I, this is where I belong. So you are, you have how many other representatives on we have three on representatives and we have one senator. Yeah, <laughs> obviously one. The senator represents how many? Or just Kauai? Yes, the whole island of Kauai and Niihau. Oh, wonderful. Yes. So you have your own? Yes. That's great. So the other three, how, how is that divided so, on Kauai? So um, Representative Tokioka has central um, Lihui and the outskirts of that, and Representative Nadine Nakamura has the other side of Nepali up to Kapa, which includes the Hanalei area. So Kauai is much larger than, I know I had this thing about Kauai being a nice, neat little place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Kauai is the oldest? It's the oldest. Of all of the islands yes. in or the inhabited islands. Inhabited, you're right. And in the chain. Yes. 
And so the volcano showed up there first, we yes, think. exactly. I believe so. And we're all like slipping into the ocean slowly as we go, so Kauai will probably be the first. We are slipping <laughs> into the ocean? Well, that's what um, geography says. Really? Yes. That's why the big island grows and the other islands kind of go down. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we have all those little islands further up the northern. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All of those. <laughs> long, but that's going to be that's, millions uh, yes, and millions of years. A couple of millions of years. Of years. Yes. 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 Yeah, we're not going to talk about it. Right. <laughs> so, but you come together mm -hmm. for the sake of... Now, there's several... Uh, what do I call it, rural representatives, mm -hmm. because we tend to think of Oahu-centric. Yes. We do. So is there a way that all of you come together? Of course. Uh, a good example is how we do work with our Oahu colleagues because they don't understand our rural nature, and the Big Island rural nature is extremely it's, different yes. you know, from Kauai. Um, but they are able, we are able to make them understand our needs and it's important that we have those relationships because otherwise we wouldn't be able to bring home things that we need to improve our infrastructure, right, obviously. Well, we need to take a break mm -hmm. and we'll be back in just a minute. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. They said I could play, so any chance to play at all. You know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah, I saw it. Hi, I'm Bill Sharp, host of the Asian Review here on Think Tech Hawaii. Join me every Monday afternoon from 5 to 5.30 Hawaii Standard Time for an insightful discussion of contemporary Asian affairs. There's so much to discuss, and the guests that we have are very, very well informed. Just think, we have the upcoming negotiation between uh, President Trump and Kim Jong-un. The possibility of Xi Jinping, the leader of China, remaining in power forever. We'll see you then. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Community Matters. <laughs> and we are talking today with Representative Dee Molokawa from the beautiful island of Kauai. I, they tell me, and I, I'm a, I agree, it's the prettiest place on the planet, the heart chakra of the world, yes. So Dee, tell us, what are the big issues on Kauai, even though we think this is Paradise, what, what are the big issues? Well, it's such a beautiful island, and we've been doing very well promoting it that we've got this boom of tourism, but are not able to handle the capacity. But when do you say no more, right. or how do you limit it? So what we have to do is at least try to mitigate the, the impacts that tourism has on our, our waste, on our sewage system, and also on our traffic. So those are probably the bigger issues that we have to deal with next. Um, how do we deal with expanding roads or bus service, or how do we commit to getting uh, residents hooked up to a sewer, sewer system that um, will stop the possible contamination of our oceans and our streams? So that they're not hooked up to a sewer system? Not all of the towns. We have many, many cesspools still in operation. And the county, from 30 years ago, the county has stopped using, doing that as a priority because I guess, you know, when you don't see anything come out, you don't really react to it. But we're seeing that now streams are coming out contaminated. Is it the injection? Is it the seepage from the cesspools? No one can really tell, but we should be proactive and try to put the infrastructure in. Well, do you have, you've got a lot of farmland and ranches. What do you see? Pesticide, because that's a big thing everywhere. Yes. For restricted use pesticide especially, we need to make sure that we know what is being sprayed when, and we do have, um, the Department of Ag has a site that you can see what is being sprayed. 
Um, that was legislation I introduced when I first got elected. And then 2491 was a big issue back on Kauai about um, pesticide use and reporting again. And what came out of it was the Good Neighbor Program, and that was voluntarily tried on Kauai and has worked. So this past session, we finally passed legislation that would mandate the whole state to comply with those same um, reporting, buffer zones around schools to protect our children especially. And it was a good compromise, and I think we're moving to get forward in a very good direction. So people really understand the issues with pesticides. Yes, yes, especially restricted use. I mean, you can use any other pesticide as long as you follow the label, but restricted use is very dangerous and has to be used properly. And our industry is using it properly. As long as we have the enforcement in the Department of Ag, I think we can rest assured that there'll be training and there'll be inspections um, conducted statewide. But, so the, um, what about the harbors? Do you have issues with your harbors? Well, right now, we've done so many repairs to our both harbors out on the west side, Kikiola and um, Port Allen. And because of that, we have this boom of people wanting to use it. So now the complaint is that there's no room for recreational fishermen to get their boats out. There's just too many people, and more so with Hanalei shutting down. The Hanalei boating tours have kind of moved out to the west side to get their tours out that's from because our side. Of the storm. Because yeah, there's nowhere to launch out in Hanalei right now. And uh, so that everything changed after the yes, storm. Yes. So now we have a boom of tourism on the west side, which is great for business. But then again, we have to watch our infrastructure whether we can handle Koke. The traffic going up there is just—I've never seen it like that ever in my whole time on Kauai, and people are complaining there's no parking, the buses can't turn around, so we have to deal with that. Next session, we're going to have to take a look at how we can expand or, or better get our visitors the experience that they want. Now, what I've noticed in talking to um, candidates from all over the state, mm -hmm. almost all of them have that same thing. What do we do with tourism? We need the tourists, but it's out of hand. What do we do? How do we do you have any idea of how we get this under control? Well, I can just talk for my district, and okay. I'm looking further down the road. It would be a really nice experience if tourists could get to their, to, to see like Koke, the Nepali, or Polehale, by getting to one central area, jumping into shuttles, or jumping onto a train that will take them through town to visit the orchards along the way to Polehale Beach and come back and not have to use their cars to go up to Koke or down to Polehale. That would be really nice for the visitor experience. And I think, you know, as we expand our roads, uh, we'll be better able to handle tourism. We just have to make sure we plan for the capacity. But now, you are now in leadership. What does yes. that mean? What does, in leadership yeah. in the House of Representatives, what, what does leadership? You know, when I first became the majority floor leader, I had to pinch myself to see if this is really happening because there are 51 members in the House. And I started as just the vice chair of health and then became the chair of human services, which is big already. And then all of a sudden, with the new speaker, he assigns me to be the majority floor leader. And I'm, Are you I still realize, the chair of another? No, no. I have okay. to step, let that. that go because now I am in leadership, which top four positions, speaker, vice speaker, majority leader, and then myself, majority floor leader. That just allows me to participate in the, those critical meetings where we decide what the policies and our priorities will be and how we're going to move it forward. So. I can have an impact on every issue if I needed to. Well, now, last year, or last beginning of the mm -hmm. session, mm -hmm. there were almost 3,000 bills presented. Yes. How do you go through 3,000 bills? How that's, do you make a decision? Right. <laughs> that's where you come in. Yes, yes, right. Administration, of course, has priority. The governance administration, we make sure that their policies get looked at. But the chairs of each committee are responsible to look at the bills that are with their committee and then decide which ones are going to get heard. But we as leadership have already said homelessness perhaps will be our, our focus this year. So any homelessness bill that 
looks really good is what we want to push through. Or if it was the rail, or if it was tourism, you know, they, they're the ones that hold the key to what issues actually get introduced out. So we, we go from 3,000. And you get a few hundred. And then you end up with a couple hundred that finally pass. And so with, with your, as floor leader, do you interact with all the other legislators to see where they are and what yes. they want and how they feel for their committee? Well, the, the final bills that come out, it's my job to make sure I know if there's support for those bills or not. So I keep track of the votes. I have to help the majority um, leader running uh, to run the session every day. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. So the, the session, for anybody that doesn't know, that happens at a certain time every day yes. and everybody comes to yes. the floor. From January, mid-January to the last, uh, first week of May. And then, so during the session, every day, do every, they meet? Every day, yes. So they come from their offices to mm -hmm. the, yes. to the, Yes, those or of the us. Capital, yes, yes, those of us who live um, outside of Oahu move over, and then we go home on weekends. So we spend the time here on Oahu through the whole session. Oh boy! Yeah, <laughs> it's it's tough, especially That's, with, I was going to say when you've got yeah, children, when and, people have oh, children, families yes. and all. Yes. Yeah. So you have to go back and forth all well, the time. Well, even off session, right now I go back and forth because I do my business um, at least once a week here on Oahu. So you come over at least once a week yes. during the summer. Yes. And then get ready for this the next election. Session. We have to, oh yes. And then the election, of course, the, does kind of throw us off a little bit, especially when we have a very important race. So now you have the primary because there is a person. A Democrat. A Democrat. Challenger, yes. So that would be on the 11th. Yes. And then you get ready for the election in November. Well, I, I don't. I just have a primary. So if I get past the primary, then I can no start Republican. working for policy next session. So there's yes. no Republican? No Republican. This is the first time I haven't had a Republican challenger. I, I'm sorry about that. We should have a two-party system. And I, it, it just seems that for some reason, and, and this is my my own thing. Yes. The women that they had in the Republican Party were smart, well-spoken, good-looking women, and for some reason they pushed them out. I don't understand that. I, I'm not asking you to comment. <laughs> I, I'm just saying this is this is just watching. It's their slow march into oblivion. It's it's all with the presidential administration. It's, yeah, it's, it's a, hard. With only five members, one, yes. any, nobody left in the Senate, is there? Nobody. Nobody. No Republicans yeah. left, and only five, not even yes. that many in the right. House. But in the House, we do work very closely with our female colleagues on policy through the Legislative Women's Caucus. Well, that's good. And yeah. I, like I said, it just bothers me watching that happen because yes. in a democracy you need both sides. Yes. You need yes. that kind of working together to get mm -hmm. to the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I, <laughs> oh well, what can I say? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody asked me. <laughs> Things that uh, we have got, gotten so much good stuff past this last session that there's a lot of hope for the future and I think um, that's where I'm coming from is looking at the future because we want to live this leave this place in a better place for our, our future generations so I want you to look right into this camera mm -hmm. and tell us why we should vote for you I when I first got into politics I didn't like what I saw about being a politician but I felt that in my heart, I could really deliver for the people in this position, and that is why I have been running election after election, and that is my platform. It's to do the best I can for you with whatever concerns you have in mind. I ha you know, I, I'm only doing it because of my love for Hawaii 
and I just ask that I get supported and get reelected so I can continue doing this good work that I've been doing for the past eight years. Well, thank you so much for visiting with us, and good luck with your campaign, and we'll talk to you next year. Yes, thank uh, you. I hope so. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha.